Tim. And we, we are the All, all cool, cool Gamekeepers. Gamekeepers. All, all editions of Dungeons and Dragons. All, and I mean all. So hey man, I got a question for you. What got you wanting to play D and D all those years ago? Growing up in Cassopolis, uh, I was, you know my you know my childhood best friend lived across the street in the corner named Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill Stitt. Stitt. Bill Stitt. Yeah, yep. and his he had, he had an older brother named Bob, and they were playing Dungeons and Dragons, and they were using the like the really beginning edition there, oh, the uh, Moldva edition. Yeah. So oh. I just I just remember this, and then you know. Getting involved with them, you know. Right. Everybody knows that how it's pretty basic back then. You you only had certain classes you can play. So yeah, I remember the basic basic classes. Yeah, I'm a fighter. <laughs> it seems like when the days I was over playing, it's like when uh, you know, the story broke that when Ron Reagan got shot back then. I seem to remember being over there maybe the days we're playing Reagan. So I told you how old that was. 1980, at least. Because Reagan came into office in the 80s. Yes. Um, and I didn't start playing until 82, spring of 82. Yeah. And I wasn't I wasn't here yet. I was in Cass office. Right. Well, Tim is at Niles now. So. Right. So anyway, um, you were saying about Reagan getting shot when you guys were playing. And I remember MTV just starting at the time, too, because it was on the cable, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't cast it, you know. Cable wasn't a big thing as it was, you know, in South Bend or something. You know, cable right. was just starting to go around. But remember they had cable and MTV just getting started. Reagan was shot. So that's what I can remember about first starting to play, you know, the D&D. &D. Right. You know, the old box edition like this. Right. Yeah. Um, I remember meeting you when you moved down the street and riding the bus. And a guy, David Thompson, him and I were talking about Dungeons & Dragons. But neither one of us had dice yet, but we knew how, roughly how to play. And he said something about, hey, Rob plays D&D. &D. And I'm like, who the hell's Rob? I mean, he was this new kid on the bus at the time. I mean, and I'm like, hey, he's over there. I don't know who he is. But David uh, kind of introduced us to playing. And I was in seventh, and you were in eighth grade at that time. And uh, I just remember that, hey, I had this set, and then you had the blue box set by the time we started playing. And it was like, wow. I got You know, I, my first time was with my friend Terry Sheldon. And um, I haven't talked to him in so long, but um, you know, anyway. But but then, I mean, Terry couldn't play as often as you could, so we played a lot, and I remember that. Um, but but I think what got me into it was the the Hobbit cartoon by Rankin and Bass, um, and it was just so cool. And I think the thing that stuck out the most was the uh, Birds in a Tree song to me from the Hobbit after they left the the Goblet Cave. And the orcs with the wards were chasing them down, and uh, the funny little birds in the tree song. It stuck to me, and uh, and fighting orcs and goblins um, was like something that I wanted to be able to pretend to do. Um, uh, and it was just, uh, it just I don't know, yeah, it stuck with me. And I read the book um, from the library, the the, pict the pictorial book, not the actual book, because God, that would have took forever. <laughs> Yeah, I've never seen it pretty large, but, but and uh, um, and I, that's what got me into it. And here it is, uh, forty years later, I still like it. You know, and my wife says you're a big ass nerd, and I'm just like, yes, right. <laughs> but that's what I remember most about D and D, uh, and that's what got me into it was that. Um, so. Um, uh, what, do you, what do you think, what is the thing that makes D&D &D most enjoyable for you? I think making the character your own. In, invest in the character, doing, you know, plan ahead, what do you want to do, what's your, what's your path? You know, what kind of road are you going to set for your character? I know games that we know we're going to get started, it's going to be a serious campaign, that's what I'll do. I'll start, start uh, you, know, you know, researching. Okay. What do, what do I want to go with this character do? You know, I want to multi-class it here and get this and something I'm going to have fun with. You know, trying to make sure I'm going to have something I'm going to have fun with and not right. just be bored and have, you know, just bored basic skills and stuff. Right. You know, not, not trying to be the most powerful at the table, just stuff to make it, to make it fun, enjoyable, and make me invested. That's why I do it, invested into my character. Right. Well, how do you feel about backstory? I, in, uh, serious campaigns. I look look forward to doing a backstory. You know, I'm not huge long backstories. 
I, I make it something simple, and, and I might, you know, a lot of times I give the give the DM little hints here that he might want to do down the road, you know, right? Like he he saved a mysterious, you know, he, 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 you know, he saved somebody mysterious, and then I uh, didn't realize who it was, and then this it's a more powerful force sees what you you know did, and later on he might give you something. You know, something compatible with your your you know your level that would give you know more ability of magic item or something. You know, I I, I totally get that. Um, I mean, I like backstories. I don't like them to the fact that well, hey, we don't really need a thirty-page backstory right. for a level one character yet. I mean, I'm going to traumatize your character enough as a DM to give you enough to write about. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I understand that. Um, like I've always played the paladin, and people are like, why do you want to keep playing the paladin all the time? Well, because I've never got to finish the story. I start up my paladin, he wants to do good, and the the game fizzles out, and I never get to have the the end game to it. Um, and so I keep starting over. Um, my old paladins, I just keep pushing them off as new NPCs for future campaigns if we ever get there. I mean, Gregor, my paladin I love right now, if it wasn't for COVID, um, if I would be able to, I would have finished his story, but because um, of that, I mean, it's put a lot of dampering on it, and and mom getting sick and with cancer and dad having strokes, it's just made it really hard for me to spend the time with it that I want to, and I really would love to to get that and and to write this new Curse of Strahd campaign with you guys, um, and just because I feel potential, which really is cool because. You're all melee class, the four of you, and there's no casters in it, and it's just like, oh yeah, this is going to be a, a slaughterhouse. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are going to power your way through some stuff, but but you're going to be weak after the fight, and I'm like, yeah, this might be good. So yeah, yeah I like the paladins too, and I really, I really like playing the paladins. And I, I get I get mixed up a little bit of ribbon and teasing by you know by what a DM that runs the other game there, and so, you know. Right. But it, you know, it's, it's all fun. And we had, and I did get the almost the end game experience with my pal. I got the 19th. You're talking about Ethan's game? Yes, Ethan's game. Uh, yeah, I got the 19th. We got the 19th level. We didn't, you know, we come back for, you know, every now and then for, a, you know, like a one shot with these characters. Right. Because, you know, it's, you know, this character is still important to me. And I, this, to me, the story's not dead with my character. Right. I want to, you know, I want to get, you know, get the 20th level. We haven't quite got the 20th. We, we did ni got the 19th. And it's been a right. while since we played. But, you know, we played other campaigns. Ethan's running, and um, so I'm hoping one day we'll get back and get get to that 20th level and you know finish what I wanted to do with her. By that time, they'll have the rules, the official rules for level 30, and you'll oh, be like, oh, it's nowhere over. <laughs> right, and I and I we actually had, you know, I was actually got you know stuff as it leveled up. You know, things changed. You know? Yeah. So you know, the weapons changed a little bit. You know, actually, the weapons were like a symbiote at one point with me. And then, um, and I was, you know, stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like Marvel's Venom symbiote. I yeah, mean, you can, yeah, your okay. weapon, the weapon, you know, the weapon automatically come out of my hand. Okay, they, I couldn't be disarmed. They, they could not be taken away from me. So eventually, you know, that progressed. You got a little bit better, you know. Okay, we found it, and then, um, you know, down the road, so you know, okay, I'm getting enough high enough level that you know every paladin should get their holy avenger. So right, it's on the man. So he made, so he made us think where I'd go down this cave, and there's one of the person on the party helping us. Uh, helping me come down, and you know, I had a feeling my Holy Avenger was down there, and my symbiote was jealous of other weapons. So, oh, so I had to—I had actually had like a you know flame tongue or whatever, and it got jealous, so I had to give that to another character, and then what it did is it created a second weapon for me, so it was okay. a total symbiote, which was really cool. I, I really had fun with that, but good. The symbiote did not want me having the Holy Avenger because it was so jealous, so it bursted out of my body. I had to take a lot of damage. And it, you know, became its own. How much damage do you think he took? Oh, I think I had. To, I think I made a save, so I want to say maybe sixty points after I made my save. And about how many do you think you had at that time? Uh, it's probably you know up into one hundred ninety. No, it's probably over two hundred. Because okay. what it did is what it did at one point too. It, it it created a second. I could create a second per over me pop out. Right. Each of us had half the hit points of the original. Okay. So some of my, uh, you know, my, um, I gained levels and got to where I can increase my abilities. I said, well, I'm going to need to take the toughie because I need more hit points 
Tough feet, love that feet. And so when <coughs> I separate, I'm going to have more hit points, and it's going to have the other half of the hit points, and we're both fighting together. Okay, so that's how that was working. And I, you know, I was like, man, it's kind of tough because we only got half the hit points now. One of us could get knocked down. Right. So I made it tough. So You're not really the tank anymore. No, I, I, <laughs> I was a front line person, but I, but I, really, you know, I really wasn't the tank, but I was a front liner. Okay. Based on that. And then, so eventually it, 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 it ripped itself out of me. Okay. I mean, you know, so took a lot, took a good hit, amount of hit points, and then I get totally vengeance, and then I had to fight, fight it, and then kill it. Okay. And then that was it, it was gone. Okay, so, but once it essence was gone, was your hit points restored? Yes, I went back. Okay. I went back. I went back to, you know, being, I was actually, it didn't take my half the hit points, but it was ripped out of my body. Okay. So I had my normal amount. So, you know, so we had, you know, had that little fight. I had, like I said, I had one of the persons in my party helping me, and, you know, got my Holy Avenger, and, you know, went on, and you probably have a one game session after that, where I actually got one, I got to use my Holy Avenger once. Okay. One session. And so, you know, we haven't been back to that, but it, it got real close to the end game that I was, you know, what shooting for, so. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, I always love, I, I mean, end game sounds great, um, and, um, because, but then after that, what do you do? Do you retire the character? Do they become a patron to someone else? To one of your new characters, you know? Oh, remember we did that as kids, like, remember it was Hawk, did Hawk Jr.? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Ar Arak and Arak oh. Jr., you know? We made extra characters. I mean, like, oh. and we had everything in the, the monster man or the DM's guide. Yeah. You know, like, what do we got? Oh, you just keep rolling on the charts. You know, and, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and people just look back and see how funny it was. And we weren't really playing like we're supposed to be playing and stuff. But but, but we had fun though. And we had kept us here. So forty years later, yeah. we're still here. It was memorable enough. You know, um, it's not like it blackens your eye and you're like, I ain't never playing that again. Yeah, it was just you, you know? and me <laughs> upstairs in the kitchen table. Yeah, and, and it's funny as we're here in my mom and dad's basement. I'm 51 <laughs> years old in my mom and dad's basement. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think about that. But <laughs> that's one of the things. It's like, yeah, here I am. I'm an adult. My wife is upstairs right now in my old bedroom from when I was a kid. Watching um, TV. Yeah. yeah, she's watching TV. And, um, but you know, uh, yeah, it was. It's forty years later. We're still playing. Uh, we're doing. We're having fun. And and, but there's not really any guys that our age in our group. I mean, our groups are. Well, one of our groups with John um, and yeah, Scott and Damon. They're our we're age. Close, kind of close. Yeah. But we never. We didn't know these guys growing up. And then the group that he was with his pal then is a bunch of young kids, in their teens and twenties. Um, and they have a love for it. I mean, it's it's so great that these people are coming together to play a game, even though the additions have changed and the rules. I mean, you go back and play 1E. I mean, it was a grind. Mm -hmm. But we played 2E with Tim Bartz not too long ago. Yeah. And you guys went at the Temple of Elemental Evil. And, like, you clear two rooms, and your party is exhausted of spells. Your fighters are beat to heck. Yeah. Um, and you got to go rest. And go back to town, yeah. you got to go back to town because you can't rest there in the Temple because there's too many wandering monsters. Yeah. I mean, it is, it was brutal. Yeah. Um, whereas 5e, I mean, it gives you a lot more, it flows better to where there's less downtime not fighting, yeah. which is cool and all if you're not a, a big role player. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like a little bit of both. One third of my game, I would love to have role playing, one third combat, and then uh, like a third of just, uh, you know, a little bit of mixture of both, um, you know, potential threats, investigation, um, you know. Or, or half and half combat, half and half, you know, uh, role playing. Right. Uh, it's, yeah, it's funny. I, I'm 53, so we had my 50th birthday about three years ago. That's when we decided we we're going to start playing together. second edition. So we probably started second edition when you were in Elk Park. Right. And we were anti, anti, you know, fifth, fifth. edition. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're not. No, no, we're playing second edition. You know, playing second edition. You know, was, we, got, you know we don't want to learn this new system. We know the second. We know second edition really, really well. Yeah. And then you know, and then uh, you know, one of the guys that was. You, you knew because he came to the shows and bought you know the walls and stuff that you made out of your prayers. Oh, uh, Tom, wasn't it? Tom. Tom. Yeah, it's Tom. And Tom I can't remember Tom's last name. So yeah. he, we got him, you got him. He hadn't played second edition. He was a fifth edition and probably been, might have been Pathfinder. But got to him, was teaching him second edition. And, right. And then, you know, they, he just lived a few miles from me. So he had, open, he had a spot in his, you know, weekday game night. So he invited me. So that's, I went over there. I had to start, you know, take a fifth, you know, fifth edition character. Give it a shot. See how it goes. And, Right. And you know, try to play it. And 
you know, I still, I wasn't playing my character the way I should have been playing. I didn't learn it until later on, so it took a while to learn. Hey, right. I should have been doing this. I, I could have been doing that and all this other stuff. So, And then you started playing with the, down the secret door with a group, right. a group, a different group. And then I, you know, you guys started that, and then I joined in with that group later on. So, you know, Strahd. Yeah. So, so we started getting into the editions. I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. And got more and more. Oh, this is really cool. It's like, so I was getting to the point where I only wanted to play fifth edition. Right. But we did start playing a little bit of second edition again, and the, uh, COVID hit. So yeah. That kind of put a damper on that. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Virus. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, I uh, enjoyed playing 5e. Uh, I enjoyed playing 1e, 2e, basic. It doesn't matter. Because to me, as a most of the time DM, to me it's about telling the story that I have up here. And I'm going to tell you right now, all my stories come from all these books. I've read damn near every one of them. And I go through and I read them. I'm like, this is a little cool little plot line. We'll put this over here. And we'll take this. You know, and... Uh, you know, it's just every story in every movie made nowadays is a rehash of something else. Someone else has wrote this, and they just take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and they create a story. And that's all I'm doing as a DM, and I really enjoy it because my players come back all the time. Well, they want to play, so I know I'm doing something right. And, and you're also doing, you know, like getting your, your characters invested. You've done things to get your characters and people invested in their characters. Yeah. I just I just started. Uh, Filling in for Tim while he's uh, taking time off, helping his dad out on Wednesday nights, and so I started my first five E DM, and we played about six sessions or so, and and you know we went out. It took him a while to go out and come back to Luskin, where they're based from, and you know get rewarded with a magic guy, and you know dealing with Jarak, so Jarak, so he runs Luskin. He's you know basically sent him out. And That's always cool though that you put in a popular character. I mean, if if you have no idea about the Forgotten Realms and the, the heroes that populate it, I mean, he's just another guy to you. I mean, but if you've read the Salvatore books and you know who Jar Axel is, you know who Drist is, and Brunor, or Artemis, you know, it makes, it draws you in more if you're a fan of those books.